was born February 12th, 1934 in West Monroe, Louisiana. After the large number of blacks moving west during World War II, Russell's father moved them to Oakland, California when he was eight years old. After moving to Oakland, his family fell into poverty and they moved into a series of public housing projects. With his raw athletic ability, Russell made his high school basketball team. Ah! Team, Russell led the, his high school basketball team to back-to-back -back state championships. Russell <laughs> received a scholarship to University of San Francisco after the coach saw him pl saw his play in high school. He showed rapid improvement at USF and led the school to back-to-back -back NCAA championships. Russell also helped USF in track and field where he ran the 400 meter and the high jump. Russell was selected in the 1956 draft by the St. Louis Hawks and later traded to the Boston Celtics. Before his first year, Russell represented the United States in the U.S. National Olympic basketball team in Melbourne, Australia where they defeated the USSR in the final game to win the gold medal. In his first year with the Celtics, he averaged 15 points per game and 20 rebounds per game, in which he won the national championship with the Boston Celtics and was named the 1956-57 NBA Rookie of the Year. The Celtics lost the next year in the NBA Finals, but would go on to win the next eight NBA championships and two more consecutive championships in 1968 and 69. Ah! <laughs> a total of 11 NBA championships in his 13-year NBA career. He was also active in the Civil Rights Movement, where he marched with Dr. Martin Luther King on the historic March on Washington. <laughs> Russell was a large proponent of integrating basketball and sports as a whole. He held multiple integrated basketball camps and was known to, to speak out against racial prejudices in sports. Russell is widely considered one of the greatest NBA players of all time. He averaged 15 points and 23 rebounds throughout his NBA career. For his accomplishments in the civil rights movement, on and off the court, Russell was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Barack Obama in 2011. Ever Super Bowl was held in, on January 15, 1967 between the Green Bay Packers and the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh. First game between an AFL and an NFL team, the two teams would later merge, forming the NFL, which we know today. The sport bodybuilding in the 1960s saw improvements in the athlete's physical condition because of scientific improvements in the human knowledge of dieting. Sergio Oliva was a bodybuilder. He was a Cuban bodybuilder that sought political asylum in the competition. When he was in the competition in Jamaica, he snuck up from the Cuban guards and sought political asylum. In the to the U.S. and this demonstrated Cold War tension at the time. The late 1960s, they saw a great radical change in tennis. Before this time, you must understand that it was excluded only to amateurs, the most prestigious competitions. The shift had a profound impact on both amateur and professional tennis. Commercial sponsors started getting involved in the sport. The schedule of tournaments was radically changed and enlarged. Arthur Ashe, the first black player, 
He broke the race barrier, and players started making hundreds and thousands of dollars in the 1960s. And also, you, it's also notable that people started, the American people economically got involved with sports more. Hey Grandpa, I have a history report on surfing. Can you tell me a little bit about that? What decade? The 1960s. Uh, you sure you want to know about the 60s, boy? Yeah, I really need to. Yeah? Yeah. There was a time period surfing in Hawaii. It was mainly in Hawaii. It got real popular because white people started surfing. And you sure you want to know about this? Really sure. Yeah? yeah. I can tell you a little bit about it. Okay. It was influenced by the hippies movement. A lot of drugs and... Or that's a real generalization. But yeah, there was a lot of drugs. Wow. A lot of surfing. Mainly longboards. It was a hell of a time. Uh, how about we go on a walk and I'll tell you more about it. Okay. You see, surfing it was seen as a as a hobby and a, and a sport. So there was debate in the uh, in the magazine. First of all, you need to know that the Surfer magazine was invented or it was produced in the 1960 in the month of January is first released and. And there's debate, a lot of debate, it really got heated, man. And you just got to know that people weren't sure if it was a sport, a spiritual, like, action you do, or if it was more of a art. But but now in today's world, as everyone knows, it's it's a sport, you know. But, it's, but really what I believe, and what most people believe, it's a combination of both, man. Yeah, 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 you understand, man? I really understand. You see, my little Grom of a grandson, you see, there's cultural diffusion going on in Hawaii in the 60s. It was the epicenter for surfing. Once the Americans started adopting the Hawaiian way of surfing, the sport just skyrocketed. It just boom. You know what I mean? Yeah. And. You saw a lot of cultural diffusion in Hawaii with the surfing, the culture, and Hawaii got Americanized. Wow. With big waves. That's crazy. Yeah, that's how I met your grandma. She's a pretty hot. She's pretty hot, I'll tell or she was pretty hot. Huh?